Tara, so, Tara, I want to read a quote to you. I don't want to embarrass you at all, but I want to read a quote to you about your guitar playing. Okay. So this is a Calgary-based music writer. I don't know the name. Uh, she said, her fingers need not explore the fretboard. They already bought it, moved in, and furnished it in high-end boutique style. Ooh. How do you feel about that? Well, I don't really like boutique furniture, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> I, I'm super into that. That's very lovely. Were you good right away? No. No? Oh, my God. Was anybody? Um. It, it was like people I knew who got it in like a couple of months. Yeah. You know, it took me a long time. I feel like I was okay right away. Yeah. Like I feel like the right hand came, like this stuff came mm -hmm. relatively fast, you know? Mm -hmm. But I wasn't, that was about all I could do. I can't do much beyond that now. Yeah. I remember when I first started, there was, um, there was a moment where, you know, my dad, uh, who doesn't play Dave Lightfoot, also he's not Gordon. Yeah. Uh, We've established that. He, yeah. uh, he taught me Hell's Bells, the beginning of the ACDC Hell's Bells. Play it? I don't even remember. Oh man, it's not. It's in A minor. Oh, I can't even remember. Man, maybe it's in D. Anyway, he taught me the beginning of it. And I'm still not as good as I was that day, <laughs> apparently. <laughs> but you, you, you figured that out early. And that oh, was... there it is. I don't know, something like that. I can't remember. But I remember my dad teaching me that and thinking like, oh my God, my dad's so good. Yeah. Now when I watch my dad play guitar, he doesn't even actually know any chords. Like he'll be like... <laughs> <laughs> when, I, when I showed him that guitar, I was like, dad, check it out, play it. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh, I forgot, you can't play. My, my, my dad was like a, folk, he was like a folk singer, so he, would, he, he knew how to, like I think he taught me House of the Rising Sun early. Like, yeah. Like... Yeah. And I did. I thought it was the coolest thing in the entire world. Yeah. I thought it was the best. The guitar playing could get no higher. Yeah. And then I realized my dad's name was Gordon. They used to call him Four Chord Gord. Four Chord Gord. Yeah, yeah. That's all he needed. Yeah. yeah. Classic. <laughs> my, uh, my Aunt Teresa, who, who gave me one of my first really extended weekend guitar lessons, that was when I learned that song. How's I stayed with her for three days, um, ate cabbage rolls for the first time, which was uh, debatably. Mm, sure, I understand. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, and I remember she taught me that tune, and it my poor parents. That's all I can say. Mm -hmm. You know, I must have played it over and over. I remember falling asleep with my guitar. Like, there's photos of me as a kid uh, sleeping with my guitar. And playing House of the Rising Sun when you could? Yeah. Is that I, the song? Yeah. I mean, yeah, totally. Um, th but there were many. Um, that that was a major one, though, because it had all of the chords. Yeah, it had that F, which right? is so hard. Yeah. So hard. Yeah. yeah. And I remember thinking, am I ever going to get this F chord? Is that ever going to happen? I don't know if I ever really did. Like, yeah. To this day, I still don't love that first position F. No. No. Can't I'll, stand it I'll for still long. do this if I can, you know? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, time of Your Life, Green Day, that was another big one. Oh, my goodness. Of course. Of course it was. Mm -hmm. Grade 8 dance. Yeah. Grade 12 dance. So, All your, the dances. Yeah, so you, you mentioned your your grandmother was also pretty important to you, wasn't she? My grandmother was crazy important to me, and I'm still realizing the impact that she had on me. Um, my mother's mother was a piano player on the train, on the Via train between Toronto and Montreal. What do you mean? Um, she played in the entertainment car back when they had those. So, so her, she, she, her job was to go on the... Sorry, I did, there's no the trains where I'm from, so I don't, of course. I don't oh, know. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. Of course we got aren't. You guys got rid of them when we joined Canada. Oh. <laughs> um, so between Toronto and Montreal, there was – I think they still do this in a, in a lighter way. Um, but she would set up at the piano that was like built for the train, and, you know, anchored down. And, um, and she would play requests for the entire ride. You know, I don't know how long it was, but she would take my uncles too. She, she had seven children. So she would just take, the, you know, a flock of children with her, sit them down, say, be quiet. And, uh, and people would get drunk and, and listen to her play tunes. Like what? Like what kind of? Did you ever, did you ever ask? Like what honky, kind of song? yeah, honky tonk tunes. Um, she passed away like eight years ago, uh, but she was she was big into like also gospel tunes. She she grew up playing piano in church and stuff. Mm. Um, but so she would help me. You know, I was playing bass and jazz band in in high school, and uh, and she would play the song for me so that I didn't have to learn it. You know, right? And yeah, it was it was perfect. It was an amazing uh, it was an amazing partnership. But I never really discovered country until she passed away. Which was so sad because we could have played like these honky tonk tunes together. And do you still play any of them now? Do you play any old country songs now? Yeah, sure. Not as much as um, not as much as I used to. It's more like a, a fun like a passion project. What do you do? What's what's your what's your country song? What's your go to country song? My you go to, to country, what's your country song. Oh, I really like it, yeah. uh, I like "Hard Ain't It Hard" by Woody Guthrie. <laughs> There is a house 
streets in this old town That's where my true love lays around And he takes her, the women, right down on his knee And he tells them a little tale he won't tell me yeah, that's a great song. It's it's so cool. So, what was the first song like? What was the first song that was your own? So, we talked about uh, Hell's Bells. We talked about House of the Rising Sun. What was the first song on guitar that was kind of like, oh, I can also play my own music on this? Not not composed, mm-hmm. but I can play my generation's music on this. Oh man, that's such a tough one. I don't know if I know the answer to that. There were like um, for me, it was Time of Your Life. Time of Your Life was like a song that was on the radio that I could play on guitar. Oh, or a Basket Case or something. Oh yeah, Basket Case. Yeah, yeah. I think I think that was me too. Um, I remember learning Longview on bass and being like, I'm cool. Can you still play it? Oh, I don't know. No, apparently not. <laughs> I can't play anything from my childhood. Hello. Hi, everyone. I'm a professional musician. <laughs> do you, do, are you happy you play the guitar? Yeah, man. I mean, it's been, uh, it's been an interesting, it's been an interesting transition period the entire time. I'm always learning. Um, there's been some big moments, I would say, that, that have brought my playing to a new level. I find that I'm the type of person, I'm sure a lot of people are, I hit plateaus and I, I hang out there for a while. Um, I hit one and I think I was 18 or 19 and I was, I was dating this guy who said, you know, you're not really that great. You should take a break from playing shows for a bit. I'm a great guy. Great guy. Yeah. But he did me a favor because I did take a break and I did try and get better. Mm-hmm. And I started playing solos instead because... Um, I had been told in my original first six months of guitar lessons to not bother Why playing not? guitar solos. Uh, j- I think he wanted me to get the rhythm happening, but I was just starting, so I didn't need to be told what not to do. Right. Um, and that's become a big thing for me now is is trying to um, to kind of foster a sense of, of freedom when people are learning guitar. Um, you can kind of do anything with it. You don't have to adhere to any standards at all. You can do what you want to do. Oh, see, I thought you were going to say it was a gendered thing because I know a lot of women I know who play guitar are encouraged to learn how to play songs so they can back themselves up and not encouraged to learn how to play any lead lines at all. Well, you're smart and you're reading between the lines and that is exactly what I was saying. <laughs> <laughs> I had a feeling. You did. I had a feeling. That was kind of it, right? Yeah. Man, even I remember – and I'm, this, is a, this is a little a bit of a side story, but I was playing the Molson Amphitheater with Blue Rodeo, sitting backstage playing – this guitar, yeah. my guitar, the SG. that's been mine since I was a teenager, and warming up and kind of freaking out because um, I'd never played a room that big before. And uh, one of the one of the sound techs came over and said, "You know, I don't think Greg would like it if he found you playing one of his guitars." Greg Keeler. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. And I said, "Okay, <laughs> thanks, thanks, man." Um, and that that's still happening, you know. And yeah. he didn't mean anything by it, and no. I think he saw us play and and apologized and. Um, but that's still very real. And I've done it to people too. Mm-hmm. I mean, usually not gendered, but just, you know, when, when you're assuming somebody doesn't have the experience, uh, that you do, yeah. you, you make assumptions about them. But it's quite often gendered. It especially, is quite Especially, often especially in the guitar world. I mean, we don't yeah. have to get into it, but it is, yeah. it is, it is so often that, yeah. you know? Yeah. And even the way, like when we were kids, we would talk about girls who play guitar, it would be always like, oh, that's so hot. She plays the guitar. That's so yeah. cool. Yeah. She just, you know, it's just an instrument. She plays an instrument that she's really, really good at. Why do we have to attribute a sexual nature to this at all yeah totally and i mean i remember being told all the time you're so good for a girl oh man or you play like a guy oh good you know and i don't you know i don't know if those comments were uh all of it helped me to get where i am today so i i have no uh no qualms with any of it what do you mean it helped you to get where you did you feel like you were fighting something yeah i mean i think it in a big way i overcame a lot of challenges and a lot of obstacles um and it's made me more powerful and able to help other people who don't feel as confident. Like I, I talk to women and girls, like kids come to our shows. And um, I talk to people after the show and say, they say, you know, I'm inspired to pick up my guitar again. Somebody told me I couldn't do it or mm. this happened and I stopped playing, but you're helping me to, to get back into it. Mm. And that's what's driving me right now. Yeah, you and Christine Bougie are like the two such incredible women who happen to play guitar. Oh, guitar players you. who happen to be women. Thank you. In, 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 this, in, this, in this country right now. She's amazing. She's incredible. Yeah. Uh, well, the reason I ask whether you're enjoying playing the guitar mm-hmm. these days is because, I mean, there's, this, there's a big discussion going on about whether rock music ex- should exist anymore or mm-hmm. does exist anymore, whether it matters. Do you, any feelings yeah. on that? Oh, yeah. I mean, I think for me, when, I, when we go on tour, we see a lot of bands and not a lot of them are playing rock and roll. Uh, there's a lot of laptops on stage these days. That's okay, you know? and it's totally cool. Yeah. Um, but but we're happy occupying that space that that people have forgotten about, and 
And I, I don't think rock and roll is dead at all. So you think that the, the death of rock and roll is largely exaggerated? I think so. Yeah, I mean... Um, it's not as big as it was. No, no, it isn't. It's not as popular. But I, when I think about rock and roll, I, I go back. I think about the blues. And, um, and the blues will never die. You know? <laughs> I don't think. I hear it in every kind of music. I hear it in Honky Tonk. I hear it in gospel. I hear it everywhere. You well, it's interesting. As soon as you and I sat down, we were just getting ready. We were playing all those old. We were just playing old finger finger picked blues. I mean, mm-hmm. it's just kind of where your hands naturally go to when you pick up a guitar like that, you know. And how is that progression not getting old? Nobody gets sick of it. Three chords, not even four chord gourd. No, you can play. You can do a three chord gourd move on that, and <laughs> and you can play it all day long. Nobody will get depressed. And you can play seventy five thousand songs. Yeah, using all those chords. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I once I once tried to figure that because I was playing your cheating heart, which is you know Hank Williams' Richard and Hart. Yeah. And it was uh, I would just worked it out that it was it was just G C and D the entire time, and then that A because it's it's a chord out of nowhere. Two baby. The happy two. Yeah. I know it's getting nerdy for the CPC, but it's yeah. uh, <laughs> uh, the, what you can do with three or three or four chords is is absolutely remarkable. Yeah. Um, I, I want to ask you something about the record here. When you were sure. writing New Mistakes, mm-hmm. what was on your mind when you were writing it? Oh, a thousand things. Um, we were out touring every time my mind runs wild for most, I guess it was almost two years. That album cycle was really long. And we were all over the world in places I never thought I would get to. You know, we're in Germany and uh, I got to Paris. You know, I never expected to be able to go to Paris mm-hmm. by myself, let alone to get paid to go. Mm-hmm. Um, and so a lot of them are road tunes. Um and then I got I got the complete privilege of being at home for a month before we went into the studio. And so I just sat. I had a music room. I got my piano in there uh, that my parents bought for me when I was five. Mm-hmm. And I, I worked through the tunes on that. And I think they all come from a place of, of transition and moving, you know. It's, um, it's interesting to me that you went back to the piano since when you started talking to me, you said I picked up the guitar to try and avoid the piano. Yeah. Yeah. And I, Well, I mean, everything comes full circle, right? Yeah. I think... My biggest thing is appreciating all, all the kind of all the mistakes I've made and all, all the transitions I've gone through and the experiences I've had. Because when you name an album New Mistakes, you know mm-hmm. I'm going to ask you what mistakes are you talking about. Yeah. Well, it's, it's, mainly, it's mainly guys. Yeah. No, I'm kidding. It's not guys at all. Um, That's a bit, I feel like it's a, I'm gullible enough to believe that. That's okay. Yeah, you are. Are you gullible? No, but I believed you when you said that just then. <laughs> I lied to you and you believed me. I know. Why am I, why am I the bad one? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so what, what new mistakes are these? Um, I think new mistakes is just, it's really just about me growing as a songwriter. It's about me growing as a person and and being able to see my mistakes or the accidents that happen in the studio, you know. Um, the ending of Two Hearts, we were doing this kind of progression for a long time. And I think Joel messed up a drum fill or something, and, and we just got it onto that progression. And, and that mistake grew into what is now the end of our live show, which is, like, so exciting and and fun, you know? So, um, so I'm taking this too literally. You are? Are you? The name. Because I, uh, I was thinking about that Shins record, Wincing the Night Away, mm-hmm. where it's all about, you know, you make mistakes in your life and in mm-hmm. the hours before sleep or the minutes mm-hmm. before sleep, or in my case, hours, mm-hmm. you go through all the mistakes you've ever made in your life and you and you relive oh. them. That's what I was taking from this. Well, I think it's also about um, about taking the mistakes that you've made and, and not not dwelling on them, you know? Not going back and saying, oh, that, that sucked. I, I did... You know, I did a bad job. It's about um, moving forward, you know? Yeah. I find that so hard. I find that. I I tend to dwell. You're a dweller. I'm a dweller. Yeah, don't dwell. Just move on, man. I know. That's what it's about. So it's a road record. It's get on the road and go, you know? I feel like this this interview has become, in some ways, therapy for me. (laughs) Are we doing therapy right now? Yeah, I feel like I should be paying you right now. Yeah, okay. All right. That's cool. cool. I think we are. Tell me what else you uh, think about before you go to bed. (laughs) Swans. (laughs) (laughs) I just snorted on... Don't take that out. Thank you. Mainly swans. Um, before, oh my god! Before you play your last song, uh, congratulations. Oh, thanks. Are in order. Uh, new mistakes up for a Juno for Adult Alternative Album of the Year. Yes. Does that matter to you? Not the children's one. Uh, I don't know. My sister won the children's one a couple of years ago. Is that ago. real? Yeah, children's sure. alternative album. Shh, my sister won children's album of the year. Oh, that's so cute. Yeah, a few years ago. What's her band? Uh, they're called the Swingin' Bells. That's a great name, too. I can't. We're learning more about me in this interview than you. I'm sorry. Do you care about being nominated for a Juno? Oh, of course I care. It was amazing. They um, they called me to come to the announcement in Toronto, so we got we got on the highway from Hamilton, me and my managers, not feeling very cool. We went to the, what is it, the Drake or something? Yeah. 
Was it the Drake? I don't know. It was uh, the Great Hall. Right. And they, they called the name for uh, Gus Van Gogh for producer of the year for Paradise. Mm-hmm. And I thought, oh, that's why they called me. That's great. And I went to the bathroom and freaked out. And then I came back and they were like, no, you're nominated for Adult Alternative Album of the Year. Was that while you were in the bathroom? Yeah, because I just went in there and freaked <laughs> out. I was like, oh, it's not happening. I should just go home now. Get, well, it's, it's get me on the GO train. <laughs> it's incredible. The Gus Van Gogh train. Yeah, the Gus Van Gogh train. Uh, incredibly deserved. Yeah. Like really amazing songs. Thank you. Like Thank really you. amazing songs. Thank you. Um, I'm so happy you came in. Yeah, me too. And we're going to play House of the Rising Sun, and then we're all going to go home. It's happening. Can we do a redo of Hell- Hell's Bells now? <laughs> I still can't play it. I don't know play how to play it. Hell's Bells. I can only play There is. Right. Tear Life, thanks for coming in. You're the best. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>